we are not driven by discontent, we are driven just by joy and love of life. Not interested in billion dollars, I am interested in the 7.6 billion people. The tools of self-transformation should not be in the hands of a guru or an organization, it should be in the hands of every human being. This is mission one for us that in the next five to eight years' time, it must be available everywhere in the world, almost at no cost if possible. One should not finish this life without having a taste of divine on a daily basis. say a guru, it's only about that one thing, how to make a life blossom into liberation. For that aspect, you have to show that uh, you must know the pain of ignorance. You must know the pain of not knowing. If you know the pain of not knowing, to such a point, it tears you from inside out. You can't eat, you can't sleep, you can't do anything because the pain of not knowing is crushing you. Then solution will come. That solution, if you give it a human form, we'll call it a guru. Whichever way it comes, it's a guru. <laughs> the significance of uh, sitting with a guru is not about listening to him, it's not even about the practice, it's essentially about mm, peeling your skin a little bit so that he can penetrate you in every possible way. Because talks will entertain you, teachings will strengthen your stupidity. Practices, if you're a rogue, it'll make you a better rogue. Yes. I'm not trying to discount the significance of all those things, but all those things, though have immense value, still without the right kind of energy, need not necessarily work towards one's ultimate well-being. It may cater to immediate well-being, it may bring health, it may take away your headache, it may empower you in some ways. So, uh, the most important thing is the nature of life energy that doesn't change, nothing really changes. Shiva 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 Yandomme Shiva 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 Yandomme Here, the yoga center, 
we invested a certain amount of energy, a phenomenal amount of energy, that even if you're like a stone, we can shake your spine a little bit. <laughs> we can have you reverberating, no matter who you are, if with little willingness if you come. If you come with unwillingness, we'll, we are willing to work with you. <laughs> so we invested energies and particularly for those of you who are uh, little resembling rocks, no, I'm not saying rocks in a negative way, you know, you're rock. <laughs> That's not negative. You rock, even if you are like a rock, well, we set up times of the day. Morning, evening, 6.20, we have set a time. At that particular time, there is a certain concentration of energy. Particularly if, be, if you've been initiated, it'll be very strong. Even otherwise, if you use some kind of thought, emotion, image, to get connected to this space, we can see that that particular time works for you as a strong presence. So, between 6.20 and 6.40, these twenty minutes, uh, all this costs life. We've invested a certain amount of certain dimension of energy. Whatever time zones you are, your local time, 6.20, morning or evening, you couldn't become available to this. Whatever one may have in terms of intelligence, competence, wealth, fame and positions of power, All these things, shall work for an individual only when he or she earns the grace. Without grace, these same things which are considered a fortune, shall work against the person, can bring much pain and suffering. So the most important thing is to earn grace. Sannidhi is a tremendous tool for grace. Bring a sense of truthfulness, straightforwardness, and above all, an inclusive approach to life. If you maintain a certain level of inclusiveness in your thought and emotion, the sannadi will do or will become a tremendous tool for transformation for yourself and everyone else who comes in touch with this. So, may you know the divine, one should not, one should not finish this life without having a taste of divine on a daily basis. So. To become meditative essentially means this, that you moved away from your psychological reality and became an existential reality. 
this is why I said, this is a lap of fire. The moment you touch fire, you get absolutely existential. All the psychological nonsense is gone, isn't it? So what is needed is little more fire because if the fire of life burns little more intensely, you will see the significance of thought and emotion, the significance of all the psychological and physiological nonsense will recede. If you just burn this fire very intensely, everything else recedes. How much of your life and time you want to dedicate for your physiological compulsions and your psychological compulsions, this is a call that you have to take in your life. Humanity has progressed because of discontentment, because people are angry or jealous with each other, Wars have brought progress, wars have brought… science has exploded during the Second World War. Science did not develop because of wars. Science got misused because of wars. <laughs> Do not misunderstand technology for science. This is a serious mistake. Science is a quest, no real purpose to it. This is the nature of human intelligence. If you don't mess with it, every human being will naturally seek. When I say don't mess with it, if you don't provide ready-made answers to it, it will naturally seek. It's very natural. It is intrinsic to human intelligence that it wants to be something more than what it is right now. This does not mean they're discontent. Wherever you are right now, wherever you are right now, every human being, including you, every one of them and me, we are striving to do something more, isn't it? Does it mean to say we are discontent? No, we are not discontent. We are not driven by discontent, we are driven just by joy and love of life. What is your perspective on Rava and is there something that we can learn from him <laughs> even today? The significant difference between Rama and Ravana is, Rama is controlled. Ravana is a blazing life. When you are such a blazing life, without control, then sometimes the blaze catches you and burns you up. If you want to really go full on, you must have total control, whether anything with life or you want to ride a motorcycle or drive a car or fly a plane or do whatever the hell. If you want to do it in a certain way, you must have total control. It's your control which gives you the speed and the flair. No control and flair, it'll burn you up. In a way, that's what happened to him. Rama is full of control. We worship Ram because those serial disasters happened. He lost his kingdom, lost his wife, got her back, and when she's fully pregnant again he loses her, and he almost killed his own children, never got to see his wife again. Serial disaster. In spite of that, he did not develop any angst like Ravana. He did not become angry, he did not want to take revenge on somebody, he maintained. After killing Ravana, he wanted to go on penance for having killed Ravana because he saw Ravana's magnificent qualities, but he had to kill him because the life situations came that way. So he went on penance. Because he is like this, that the, he does not allow life situations in any way to disturb who he is. He remains who he is. Whether we agree with him, disagree with him is not the issue. The important thing is, he
he not allowing life situations to decide who he is, he decides who he is. For this one thing, we bow down to him. Yoga going mainstream with Silicon Valley startups getting some huge funding and all, and you've always been against the commercialization of yoga. What is that your suggestion about? We are not against business. When the foundation was set up with a certain purpose, we will not change that purpose simply because market situations change. Nothing has changed anyway. We are seeing how to make everything free. Right now, we are looking at sponsors. If the necessary sponsors come, we will probably roll out all the basic programs free of cost. That's what we are looking at. It may… it may take a little more time to do that. If my voice goes out, then we don't want a commerce out of that because I'm not interested in billion dollars. I'm interested in the 7.6 billion people and the goddamn number is going on increasing. <laughs> so, if the only way to reach them is through a commercial enterprise, you can start one. But don't ask me to start one because I'm not against commerce, but I'm not commerce, that's all. The power of who I am is only because I'm not a transaction. As a part of Guru Purnima, we are offering a, a new and a little enhanced Inner Engineering Online to the world today. There are many features uh, that you will enjoy compared to the old one. You can visually enjoy Shankaran Pillai, he appears on the screen. <laughs> so, uh, right now three languages are going, English, Hindi and Russian. All the other Indian languages should be on in probably a maximum of two to three months and uh, various other international languages also will be going out in the next few months. If you're below twenty-five years of age and uh, you want to do inner engineering, you just have to write to us in the next month something that you did without thinking, what about me? Just one simple act. If you write to us that I did this simple act without being concerned about what do I get out of it. One simple act like this if you do, you will get Inner Engineering Online free. Below twenty-five. Well, to all the forces, all the personnel, of uh, India's armed forces, police, paramilitary forces, for all of them we are offering it free. <clears throat> Slowly the idea is to offer this to the world without cost, but there are costs involved in delivering this, so we're making it as pay as you can. It'll take some more time, we're looking for sponsors and things. Because the tools of self-transformation should not be in the hands of a guru or an organization, it should be in the hands of every human being. The time is coming where we want to see how to deliver this to everybody in the world. Whether they can pay or cannot pay is not… has never been an issue except 
for bearing with the costs of the burden of running a foundation. But I think uh, the awareness has spread to such an extent in the world today that there are many generous people who are willing to sponsor. The most important thing is those technologies which transform human life must be available to everyone, either at minimal cost or no cost. That's the idea. Right now this is mission one for us that in the next five to eight years time, it must be available everywhere in the world, almost at no cost if possible.